first of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here. And uh, those people who have been with us from the start, uh, this is this is the fifth of five presentations. And I got to be honest with you, when we started this five weeks ago, we weren't really certain how well this was going to, how well you'd respond to this. Very pleased with your response, and I, I thank you for that. Today should be a, a real fun session because we're going to go over filters, sets, and parameters, and also the actions associated with them. But then we're also going to create a, a dynamic dashboard. I just want to show you what that looks like. We're going to create this using a lot of the things we learned over the last five weeks. So I want to, I want to show you how these things go together so that, uh, so that you can create a, da uh, a really dynamic uh, dashboard. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, to the start now. For those who haven't been with us, for all five sessions. This is this is the last of a five session series that uh, I put together on my journey going from Excel spreadsheets to, uh, to learning Tableau. And there were five things I needed to learn. And in that first session, we looked at data structure and connections and how you had to restructure data very often. In the second session, we looked at uh, the order of operation and how it's the sequence Tableau goes through to create each one of your individual worksheets. And then over the last two weeks, we looked at the four different types of calculations in the language of Tableau. And today we're going to look at filters, sets, parameters, and how they allow your user to interact with, uh, with your dashboard and visuals that you created. I want to start first by talking about filters. And I know we talked a lot about filters in session two when we did the order of operation. But filters are applied in steps three four and five of the uh, order of operation. And they actually change the structure of the data set on the individual worksheet. So uh, what we call the underlying, the underlying data table or the data table, that, that structure gets changed as you apply filters. And it's filtering out data, but it's actually changing the structure and limiting the amount of data in there. And I just wanna recap that real quickly here. This is, data from the Superstore data set. And that's the same practice data that came with your copy of Tableau. Uh, if you remember, we showed you how, we look up here and we can see the amount of data that was entered into Tableau in that data set. And it's 10,000 rows of data are sitting in, uh, sitting in this workbook. Now on the worksheet, if we look under analysis here and we look at the data on that, in this worksheet right now, there are 10,000 rows of data. We haven't done any filtering. But if we filter out office supplies, we've not only changed the visual, but if we look at the data table again, we can see now down here, there's 4,000 rows of data. Okay, we filtered out 6,000 rows of data. That means they're not available on this worksheet. You can't, you can't use any data associated with office supplies on this uh, on this worksheet. Well now sets operate differently. Sets don't don't limit the amount of data in the data table. It just recategorizes data into two groups, the in group and the out group, but all the data is still there uh, available. This is that same data set. All I've done is create a subcategory set and I did that by going to subcategory, selecting create sets. It opens up a, a window like this. I just selected some values to include in the set, but you could set up a condition or you could set up a top end to define what is in the set. And now there's two groups. There's the in group and the items checked off here are the in group and the out group are all the remaining, all the remaining data. And if we looked out here, under view data, and we looked at the actual data itself, you'd see there's still 10,000 rows of data, but it's been classified as in or out. Okay. And we can very simply, and this works just like a filter, and your user would, your user would uh, think that uh, he's doing a uh, filter, but he's actually changing set values. And as we can select here, we can select what's going in, and you can see the data changing. Now, if you remember, sets are created at the same time LOD expressions are, are created, and that's in step four of the order of operations. And that means they can be used in any other calculation. 
And I just duplicated the data set by holding down the control key and dragging sales to, uh, sales to the right. And I want to make this a table calculation. And I want it to be the percent of total, which is done in step 10 of the order of operation. And I want to compute the sell across. So now here in this data, what we're looking at is this is the percent of total based on what's in the set versus what's out of the set in the consumer segment in the central region. Sets are really great for doing this type of comparison. You can see what, what not just what the percentage is, but uh, what the impact of what's in the set is versus what's out of the set. We're going to look at that later when we create that uh, dynamic dashboard. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about today are parameters. And uh, parameters sort of had a bad name a few years ago. I don't know how many of you use parameters. I hope after today, I hope all of you use parameters. Parameters are the other way that users can input values into Tableau. The first way, obviously, you load a data set in. The second way is you, the user can input a, a single value uh, using a parameter. But there's some rules about parameters. First, they, they are a single value. They can only hold one value at a time, and they always have a value. Second, they're static. The only time that value changes is when a user manually changes it. And there's a couple ways of doing that, but uh, it's, that uh, value will not change until the user changes it. And the third thing is they're global. That same value is used throughout the entire workbook. When the user changes it, that value changes throughout the entire workbook. But the key here is that parameters don't do anything. They don't do anything until they're used in a calculation or a filter. They're just the value. And it's the calculation or the filter that actually does the work. And I want to show you a couple of examples of parameters and how they might work. I created a parameter on region. And all I did to create the parameter was uh, create parameter. And the parameter get, uh, got created. And you can see there's four regions. And to that, I added a value of all. OK. So now I've got five values in the, uh, uh, in the overall parameter. Now, there's three things you have to do when you create a, uh, when you use a parameter. First, you have to create it, just like we did. The second thing that, uh, that you need to do is you need to show the parameter, OK, so that you have a way of changing the parameter. And then the third thing you have to do is use it in either a, uh, you have to use it in either a filter or a calculation. And this is just a simple true-false calculation. It's a region equals uh, the parameter value. And when I do that, I by selecting the, uh, selecting the parameter value, we change, we change the visual so that we're only looking at, at one region uh, at any given time. Now, some of you may be familiar with doing what's called a sheet swap. Uh, I'll, use these, I'll use these quite often, and I know so, some of you use them also. You might have a, a user who wants to see different views in a dashboard based on a parameter value. I've got two views set up here. When I select all for my parameter, I get a view, a view of the map that you see. When I select any individual region, I get a, uh, a trend line uh, over, over time for that specific region. Well, to do that, what you do is you create individual charts. Now, this chart actually looks like that. I've got all four regions on the chart, but I'm going to filter uh, down to just a single, re a single region. And, and the, way I, uh, the way we do that is with that filter that I showed you before. It's just this, this filter that we showed you before. It's region equals, uh, equals region one there, or the uh, parameter value. So we're going to get it down to a single, uh, a single region. But also, there's this filter that's called the sheet swap filter. And this is another true-false uh, 
filter. And all this does is it says, uh, you know, if the region is not equal to all, and that value is going to be true, if any value here is, is anything other than all, that value is true, then this sheet is going to have values in it. When I change that to all, the all the values are filtered out and the sheet returns a null. Now I've got this map view. And this map view, this probably looks familiar to you before when we looked at the order of operation. This is the same view we looked at to do the uh, exclude example when we looked at when we excluded the state to determine the sum so we could get the regional sales, we had this view that looked like this. And on this sheet, we use that same filter. Okay. Now on this sheet, we have the value of that filter not equal to all set to false. And the way you set that to false, you open this up, edit filter, okay. Custom value, just type in false there. So this, this sheet is permanently set to false. This sheet is permanently set to true. So now when I bring them together on a dashboard, I either have this view when the, when the filter is set to all, or I have the region view. So the question becomes, well, how did I make this dashboard? Okay. We're, gonna, we're gonna make one now, we're gonna make a new dashboard. Let's drag those two on here. There's the map view. And this is the region line chart view. And you can see we got the Eastern value and that's working right. And this is working right, but that's not really how we wanted the view to look. Now the way you get it to uh, do the sheet swap and it looks like the whole, the whole view is swap is uh, we're gonna put in a container, and we're going to drop these. We're going to put both sheets in the same container. All I did was bring out a container, and I dragged and dropped each of the sheets into the container. So now, when you, now when we're set to all, you get the map view. When it's set to a region, you get the region view, and we're almost where we want. We really don't want to see those titles, and all we have to do is hide the title. And by hiding the title, we now have the sheet, sheet swap working the way that we want. This is something that I use quite often, and you might, you might find it uh, quite useful. When you usually want really two entirely different things, often it's easier to just make two different sheets and have them swap out. Well, we took a quick look at filters that limit the amount of data that's on a worksheet. We took a quick look at sets which take all the data that's in the worksheet and create two different groups on it, the in-group and the out-group. Then we took a look at parameters as a way that users can input a single value into Tableau. And, and then how you would go about using that value uh, is, uh, is really up to you. Now, I want to spend the rest of the time we've got to make a dashboard. And uh, in, in making this, uh, this dashboard, there's five different views. And I've gone back to a lot of the things we learned in, in the previous four sessions and to bring them uh, into place so we can see how they all fit together to, uh, to create something that's, uh, uh, that's really a pretty dynamic dashboard. We've got the first view we're going to look at. This, this is one worksheet. We do, uh, we're using uh, year-to-date versus prior year-to-date so we can do a year-over-year -year analysis. The second thing that we're going to look at takes a look breaking out the sales by consumer segment. The third thing we're going to look at is actually a table calculation that tells us what percent the selected area here is on the map of the total area. The fourth thing we're going to look at is a map of the United States, but this is going to be a way that we're going to change the set value without going through a drop down menu to pick uh, what values are in the set and out of the set. We're gonna use this as a value picker for the set, as well as showing the overall profitability on the year to date. And this ribbon up at the top is also a value picker. 
And this is how we're going to change the date in the parameter that's used to determine the year ending date for all of our year over year calculations and all the other calculations you're gonna see. Let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create that bang app with uh, the year to date and prior year to date and the year over year uh, calculations. I'm gonna do a little homework first. We need, to, we need to first get a state set. And to do that, we just create a set from state like we did before. We're not gonna use a condition or we're not gonna use a top end. We're just gonna select some states. And that state set is right here. And I just have it set to California to get us started because we're gonna change it dynamically, but we have to have something to get it started. Now, the second thing we need to do is we need to create a parameter for the order date. And I want to show you how uh, I want to show you what that parameter looks like. We did this just by clicking on order date and set parameter. Parameter looks like this. I gave it a title, order date. It's a date parameter. And it's got this in here. It says uh, the value when the workbook open is set to the max date in the data set. Well, what's that all about? Well, the data set that I'm using is the 2021 data set for uh, Superstore data, and it goes to the end of the year. And I only wanted to look up at, at dates through today. So I created this max date in the data set value. This is what's known as a table LOD. It's an LOD, it's got the squiggly brackets. And it's just, we don't use the word fixed or uh, include or exclude or anything like that. It's just max order date. And this will look at the entire data table and take the max date in the filtered data table, the data table that we've got in the workbook, not on the, not on the sheet. So this is going to pick the max date from the, uh, from the workbook. Now, I wanted to go back here. I told you that this data set goes out through the end of the year. And uh, if you remember when we were looking at the order of operation, we looked at something called uh, data source filters. I added a data source filter to this, uh, to this sheet. And I used the condition tab. I wanted to show you this uh, because you can, you can limit data using formulas and not just, not just picking them discreetly. This formula area on all the filter sheets and the, and the set sheets and the like, any, any, any uh, workbook that opens up like this under the condition and under formula, this acts just like an LOD. The dimension or the measure here, and this is a dimension, but if it was a measure also, has to be aggregated. So we're gonna take the min order date less than today. Okay. And it's gonna filter our data. It's gonna limit the amount of data that's in the sheet. and I. You see it's kept about 1,000 members, about 12, uh, 1,200 that were out there. So it's, it's current up through today. Okay. So we've created our uh, order date parameter. We've created the uh, state set. Now we've got to calculate our year-to-date calculations. And these should look very familiar to you. These are the same calculations that we have used when we looked at LODs and even before that, when we looked at, uh, we looked at date functions to, uh, to determine our, our current year to date value. And all this says, remember date trunk is a date function and it looks at the first day at the level of the year. So this would be January 1st of the order date equals January 1st of the parameter where we're going to get the order date. And at the same time, and we're gonna look at the month level here, uh, the first date of each month is less than the first date of the month for the order parameter. If that's the case, then I wanna record the sales. And I enclose this in an LOD. And in here, we've got the category. I've got the state set, because I only wanna look at the sets, the, the, the values that are in the set. We look at the order date itself, and the segment, and you'll see why we're doing that in a moment here. Then we looked at prior year, and prior year is the same 
formula we've used uh, previously. It's uh, identical to the, the one we just looked at, except we use date add here to do some date math and reduce the order date parameter by one year. So we're looking at the same date the prior year for uh, year and in the month calculation less than the same date one year previous. Okay. And then we calculated the uh, year over year percent, this value right here, year over year percent. And we're working with uh, LOD expressions, so they are not aggregated in themselves. So we have to aggregate them when we use them. And this just says we'll take the current uh, year to date sales minus the previous year to date sales and divide it by the previous year sales. And I converted it to a, uh, a percent. Now there's one other thing happening here. This date is dynamic. And this reference to the segment is dynamic also. And let's see how we did those, because this is kind of cool. This entire phrase here is a calculation. I'm going to show you what that calculation is. This value here, where it says all, comes directly from a parameter. And we input that value there by just selecting it. We open up insert. I came down here, selected the segment parameter, and then I just added the word segment to it. So that's where that dynamic label comes from. Okay. That pretty much gets us through this first sheet. Now, the second sheet that I want to talk about is this bar graph that we use by segment. We can look at the year to date year to date through December 20th, or December 2020 for all segments. So we're using that same title over again. Well, I wanted to show you that title. We're, we're gonna look at that title in just a second. Uh, and I included segments in this formula is just the formula that we looked at. It's the year to date, the year to date uh, sales. I wanted to show you the title and where the title comes from. This is uh, just a concatenation. We just concatenated some strings together. The first part right here is a literal that I've enclosed in double quotes, uh, year to date through in a space. Then we talk, when we talked about date functions, we talked about date name returning a reference to the date and, it re and date name returns a string value, that's the month, that's where December comes from. It's the month of the order date. Then the slash, we had a plus to concatenate in, a space and a slash and a space, and then date name year, and that's where the year comes from. Okay. And there's one other thing we're doing here, and it's really important, and this is the way you can control where filters are applied and where they're not applied. I've got the state set in here. And I applied it, I just open that up and say apply to worksheets and selected worksheets. And I manually went in and selected the sheets that I want to apply that filter to. I like to do, I like to take control of this thing. And I like to decide where I'm gonna apply the filter and where I'm not gonna apply the filter, as opposed to just arbitrarily applying it everywhere. Well, we're gonna apply that state filter to the band and also to uh, the sheet that we're on. And we're going to apply the segment filter to the band, to the sheet that we're on, and also to the uh, percent total. We're not going to put it on the map. We're not going to put it on the date picker. OK. Now, the third sheet we're going to make, this is a table calculation. And this is about the only time you're ever going to see me use pie charts because uh, I really don't like using pie charts. I don't think they're, they're, they're too descriptive. This is, this is a pretty good use for the pie chart. The uh, pie chart here values come from this year-to-date calculation, the current year-to-date calculation. All I've done is open this up and I created a uh, table calculation. It's a percent of total. The specific dimension we're looking at, we're going to look at the in and out set. So this is going to tell us what's in the set. 28% of this value is in the set, and the remainder is out of the set. And I also included what the values were on labels so we can see 
that there's 173,000 in the set and 436 out of the set. Okay. Now we got two more worksheets to make. This is obviously a map of the United States, pretty easily made, just drag state onto uh, under the canvas and you make a map. Uh, I made it a filled map and this is filled with the uh, current year-to-date profit. And I want to show you that it's a calculation that we've used before, except I used an include statement in this one. So I included down to the category level and anything lower than category will show up here like subcategory or the like. And it's that same, that same calculation. You know, the year's the same as the parameter year and then the date is less than the uh, parameter date. Determines the, profit, uh, determines the profitability. We also have the in and out of the state set in here, and then we've got the title uh, as we've shown before. Now we got one more worksheet to make, and this is a value picker. And the only thing this is used for is to pick the end date of the uh, year that we want to include in the current year calculation. And all I did to create this uh, create this date picker was I place the month of order date on columns and what it actually looks like if I show the header here it actually looks like this but I didn't want that top row on there so I hid the header I made this a the marks are squares okay I included in the text the month of header so that it's actually in the uh, in the square as opposed to being above the square. And I added an index. And if you remember, we talked about index being a table calculation and just counts across the sheet. So in this case, it's going one to 41 actually. And I put it on color so we get some gradation of color in there. And it looks kind of cool when you do that. Now, if you remember, the dates in this data set go through the filter data set, go through today, which is, which includes May. And May is actually out here, but I didn't want anybody picking May. Uh, I only wanted full months in this uh, in this example. So uh, we came back and I put in a show hide filter. Remember we talked about table calculations and we talked about being able to use what I call a show hide filter. Some people call it a, uh, a table calculation filter. But we were able to make a, a show hide filter that says, look, if last is greater than zero, then show else hide. So when I hide that value, we only see the dates through uh, April of uh, this, this year. Okay, we've got five sheets. We bring them all together on the dashboard. Okay. Took a little work to kind of get them to look okay. I know a lot of you guys are much more artistic than I am, and you're much much more creative than I am. And your dashboard would look a, would look a whole lot better than this one does. But let's just see how this works. I can come up here right now, and okay, we just changed this dashboard. So now all these dates are December twentieth. These are the totals year to date. Whoops, I just changed it back again. And it's through November twentieth now. Uh, the year-to-date total, prior year-to-date totals. Uh, the there's 29% of the value in the states of uh, California and Texas, and we're using all segments at this point. Well, let's just see how the date pickers work. You know, I can change this by hovering over it to uh, to June. Okay, I can change. I can use this to change the segment of the, there we go, there we go, uh, to change the segment of the country we're looking at, and that changes this value. So we're now, now we're looking at 128,000, 56%, and that's in the, the states that are highlighted there. But I can also come back and can take a look at segment by segment, and if we want to look at just home office, for example, you can see all the values are dynamically changing when I change to home office. And uh, that's 45% of the value. Now I'm gonna clear home office. I'm gonna clear the segment here. And you see it's gone back to the total. Well, what makes these values change like that and the dynamics of this value are filter, are, are 
parameter actions, set actions, and filter actions. And I want to show you how you create those. They're all on the dashboard. You can also have worksheet actions, but all of these are on, uh, on the dashboard. And we open up actions, and I've got four actions built into this dashboard. This first action is uh, what's known as a highlight action. Well, let me just show you how you create an action first. To add an action, just add an action, and you have a choice of filters or highlights, or you can go to a sheet or parameter values or set values. Well, this one is a highlight action. And the way you read this is uh, the, the source sheet is the date picker. That's this up here. That's where we're going to pick the value. And uh, this is only for a highlight. I've got it set to hover. I did that just for the presentation. You could set it to select where you'd actually click on it. And then the target sheet is uh, the date picker also. And it's going to highlight the dates and times. I did that so that when you hover over it, you can actually see which one, uh, see which one you pick. It doesn't do anything other than that. By the same token, we need to take that value and change the parameter. And this is a parameter action, okay? And uh, the, the target sheet, again, is the date picker. It's set to hover, so when we hover over it, we not only highlight the value, but we change the value of the parameter. The parameter value that's going to be changed is the order date parameter. There's other parameters out there. You know, we got segment out there, we got some others out there, but we're going to change the order date parameter. The value that we pick off the date picker is a month value. There's no aggregation to it. And when we clear the section, I want to keep the value in the parameter. I didn't want, you know, when I pulled away from it and we weren't hovering on it anymore, I didn't want the value to be changing. I didn't want it, you know, to be going back to some other value. I wanted to hold the value at, the, uh, at whatever value we selected up there. There's another uh, parameter that needs to be changed. And this is the parameter where we, where we selected segment. Okay, That's this group down here. And off of the sales by segment, which is this worksheet, I want to change the segment parameter. And the field that we're going to change is we're going to pick up the segment value. OK, there's no aggregation on. And this is real important here. This is when I clear the, the selection, as you saw me do, I had it on corporate, and then I said no, and then I cleared the selection by clicking here. I want to set the value to all. And if you remember when we made that, when we made that segment parameter and when we looked at all, when it, um, when it says all, you can see all the values as opposed to just, uh, uh, just the one value that we select. And this last value, and this uh, last action is the action to change the state set. This is a uh, this is a set action, and we're going from the map using select, meaning I select it with the mouse, and we're going to assign the value to the set. And when we clear the selection on the map, I want to return the values to all. So. That's how we make, make this work dynamically. And if we look at it again, knowing what we now know, when I clear the set values, and we can see the entire map, you can see, well, first of all, the percent of the year to date from the selected state. Well, we've selected all the states, so we've got 100% of the values. The date here is now uh, uh, October 18. Well, there's no prior year from October 18. That's why we're not seeing anything over here. Let's change it to September. You saw it highlight. Okay. The value of September 20th is now in all these values, the year to date value through September uh, through uh, September 20th is the current year, 373 prior year, 288. All those values have changed. If I only want to look at one of these values, like consumer, all the values change. Now we're just looking at the consumer segment. It changed from 383 to 196 and so on. When I clear the value, we go back, oops, sorry. 
we can clear the value. We go back to the 373. And we can select states. I can select an individual state like California. Hold on, the, and you can see that now this is 22% of the total. And this value has not changed. We can add like New York to it by holding down the control key. And now we select those two states. Or I've got this set so I can use a lasso or you could use a score or whatever to select a variety of states or just, just go on the uh, variety of states. The dashboards become very dynamic. Now, there's nothing that I did to make this dashboard that we didn't cover in the last four weeks. They're really very, uh, pretty basic cal uh, calculations, for, uh, pretty basic techniques to use. That when they're put together, you can create a fairly dynamic, uh, fairly dynamic uh, dashboard. Now, I told you before that I'm an engineer, and in my background as a engineer, I had to study mechanics and I had to study uh, study physics and you know quite a few things like that. And back in the second or third century BC, there's uh, there was a, a scientist for the day, uh, Archimedes, and Archimedes had a, uh, had a principle, and he had the principle of what's known as the, the six basic tools or the six basic, basic machines. And his, his principle was that you can make any more complex machine out of those six basic machines. Well, for me, I had to understand those five things that we learned about, like the order of operation and the calculations and the language and sets and parameters, so that I felt comfortable that I could apply those and make any uh, any sort of dashboard or any sort of uh, any sort of worksheet that uh, uh, analysis that we wanted uh, wanted to do i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed this session uh, i really thank you for your participation like i said we really didn't know what to expect